everybody, Garrett Vanaclausen and Todd Leahy from the New Mexico Wildlife Federation. We wanted to give you a quick narrative on stream access, how it came to be, and where it's headed. Um, so, we start in 2013 with Representative Lucky Varela, who lives in Pecos uh, and is in San Miguel County. He grows up fishing on the Pecos River, and year after year he starts to see barbed wire fences going up, right? And he reaches a point where he can't fish in almost any of the water that he fished as, as he could as a child. And I think a lot of his constituents were really feeling the frustration of, of fences going up. So in 2013, what did he do then, Todd? Uh, he, he requests that the Attorney General, then Gary King, uh, issue an opinion on, on whether you know, the public has access to these streams. And Attorney General King's opinion is that, yeah, you know, the public does have access. These fences are illegal and that, you know, New Mexico tradition and according to the, the attorney, then Attorney General, uh, the Constitution allows for uh, public access to these streams and rivers. But, you know, that's just an opinion of the Attorney General. Um, and that hung around for a while, for a couple of years. Uh, and, and but then the New Mexico legislature stepped in. Right, and, and so what happens is um, a wealthy Texas uh, individual who owns property in northern New Mexico, owns a really nice stretch of river, he hires a lobbyist. And this lobbyist then approaches uh, Richard Martinez, Senator Richard Martinez out of Española, who has a huge uh, constituency of people public land, public, public land users. Um, ironically, he, he, this public, this private land individual hires, does, he, he uses Richard Martinez to sponsor the bill. So if, if Martinez's constituency is largely public land, public water users, why Richard Martinez? I think it's a really good question. And normally, Senator Martinez is a friend of conservation and a friend of sportsmen and a friend of the, uh, recreational user groups. In this case, he wasn't. And we tried to talk him out of this thing, but he wouldn't hear any of it. Um, okay. One guy, okay, is, is, is on the side and for this bill. Needs allies to move it through the Senate. Um, how, does, how does he move it through? Well, the way legislation works is, you know, the people in key positions of power on both the House and Senate side are the committee chairs and Senator Martinez is the chair of Judiciary Committee. Um, and then he has other allies on other committees and unfortunately, uh, Senator Peter Wirth, who again is another friend normally of conservation and sportsmen, he also supports this legislation. And um, I mean, Senator Wirth has a piece of property on the Los Pinos River um, and I think there were poor decisions made by many, many legislators. It was a bipartisan deal. I mean, we had Dems and Republicans kind of turning their back on the public on this issue, and it was really, really unfortunate. Um, so it sails through the Senate with it these sailed, powerful it, allies? It sails through the Senate because we have two key committee chairs who have great influence on their committees. Um, and so it sails through the Senate. Okay, so now we go over to the House. That's usually a, a tougher course to navigate. Yeah, it was a, it was a really tight thing. And, and, it, and as the session moved on, it was very kind of uh, hit or miss. And um, there were other people in, uh, on the House side that we can't mention because it's an election season um, that were very influential in making, making that bill on the House side uh, move forward in a very quick way, people of power. And it was really unfortunate to see that. So it, it doesn't just sail through the House then, you're saying? No, and at the end it was a one vote. Uh, it passed with one vote, and, and the tragedy is, is that Representative Varela, who brought all this forward, was ill on that day, and he had he been there, um, the bill wouldn't have passed. And it was just, it was really sad to see. And there were some real champions um, that stood up for, for the public. Um, but in the end, it passed. But in the end, it passed. Yeah. Okay. 
So we passed the House, we passed the Senate, you still need Governor Martinez to sign it. And, you know, I think the last thing I read was 14% of bills passed by state legislatures get signed by the governor and become yeah. law. Yeah. So how does this bill, uh, which seems controversial, find itself inside of that 14%? I mean, the, I, think, I think the simple thing is, and if you look at campaign donations, she received a substantive campaign donation after she signed the legislation. And um, that is not really how our democracy should work. And I think, I think it was, I think she dropped the ball. I think she really did. This law needs to be repealed. There are ways to implement stream access. Montana's a perfect example. Check out some of the links on the website. It works in Montana. Utah's moving forward with a very uh, progressive stream access initiative. It's a west-wide issue, and this whole privatization of, of, of wildlife and access and all this stuff is at the forefront for sportsmen and the recreational community. So people should really get involved. We need to repeal this law, and we need to watch really careful about other things like public lands transfer, privatization of wildlife, elk tags, all of that stuff is a west-wide initiative to privatize public resources and also block access in a really aggressive way. And I think people need to get involved, they need to contact their elected officials, sign the petition. I think that's one of the first thing, 